I'm here to talk about debating and my experience on debating. One of the biggest misconceptions when it comes to debating is that debaters are empty cans. And I've received that so many times. My colleagues in debating have received that so many times. That we merely speak without any content, or we're merely public speakers or speech writers, and we simply do not care about what's happening across the world. We simply shut our eyes and ears to the sufferings which happen across the world. I'm here attempting to change your minds on the conception of what debating actually means. And I'd like to share the journey which I took when it comes to debating and how I got to where I'm at today. Usually, my friends will always ask, what are the two biggest influences in my life? First is obviously my mum. I love my mum. She's not here, but if it's recorded, I love you, mama. <laughs> the second one is debating. And I keep on telling them that it is debating. That debating brought me to where I'm at today. And without debating, I wouldn't be able to speak in front of you here today. I joined debating, I think, approximately five years ago, when I was in the Royal Military College during my high school years, the final year, that was when I decided to join debating. And for those of you who have met me five years ago, you, have, you would have realized that I'm a completely different person than who I am today. I thought back then that Africa was a country. I keep on saying this, but because it's very true. So whenever you think that, oh my god, like I, I, I need to up on my knowledge, I need to read out, I need to make sure that I'm filled with general knowledge. Like back then, me, that was literally an empty, not literally, but figuratively an empty can. I could barely speak in English. I do not get A's in my English, uh, in my English paper and tests and exams. I was a completely different person. And back then, whenever I listen, hear, meet someone, whatever the person says is something which I'll automatically believe. I was never a critical thinker. I always digest whatever people tell me, whatever I read from the news, that's something which automatically became my identity. But through debating, that's when I realized that I need to change. And that's the very reason why I did join debating. The reason why I joined, because I realized that I cannot stick in the very same framework and mindset which I was assuming back then. I realized that I had to transform my life in order for me to become a much better person for Malaysians and for my own personal development. And also when I decided to join debating, I distinctly remember my first debate experience where I went up against, and I, I was in an all-boys school. Like, can I see a show of hands? Who here have actually been in an all-boys school before? I see a few hands. And pretty sure you know, like, at that point in time when you exit the all-boys school, very rarely will you be able to see women, right? <laughs> and when you get to exit, you obviously want to impress them. You want to show, like, yes, like, remember me. <laughs> that kind of stuff. I know you're laughing now. I'm pretty sure the boys were like, yes, exactly, that was me back then. But my first debate experience was when I went up against an all-girls school, SDF in Johor. And I was humiliated. I'm not joking, I was humiliated. I was wiped off the floor. Like, my dignity was scraped off the floor with me as well. It was a humiliating experience. But that experience pushed me further to obviously embolden my confidence for me to read up a lot more. Because I know in the future, if I'm able to meet those very same three debaters, which I eventually did, that I will be able to prove to them that I could be impressionable and correct my past history. <laughs> it was something as small as that which actually sparked my passion. Not only that, but also the indulgence of learning and reading. And something which debaters often get is that you always want to aim to become a walking Wikipedia. Uh, obviously not the unreliable part of the Wikipedia section, the reliable one. But from there onward, I took on a very long journey. And that journey is not only about winning trophies. It's not a journey in which you'll see a lot of trophies, you'll get to travel around the world, a journey where you can enrich your own personal wealth by winning tournaments. No, that's not the journey. My journey through debating made me who I am today because that's when I realized that debating equipped me to become a global citizen and a passionate Malaysian to ensure that Malaysian issues are issues which I will fight for. There were a couple of experiences which I'd like to share here. 
I think this was during my third year in debating. I was debating in Germany. And people often say that through debating, you will not be able to change perceptions of people because it's just a bunch of debaters arguing in a room. And once you leave the room, you'll snap back into reality and you do not care about all the arguments which you use in that room. And that's the sad reality of debating, a reality which I'm hoping to change, a reality which I'm hoping a lot of my friends who are debaters will also push for the change to happen. Debating to me is not only an extracurricular activity, it is, an, it is an identity. It is my identity. It allows me to speak up. It allows me to push for reforms. It allows me to become who I am today. When I enter that debate room and when I exit that debate room, it doesn't mean I'll take off my debate cloak and suddenly just move back to reality and do not care about whatever happens. No. Wherever I go, even when I sleep, when I think, when I talk to my parents, when I talk to my friends, that is me talking as a debater. Sounds very scary, it's like, oh my god, you must like to argue all the time. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> debating is not only about arguing, it's also about you being strategic and diplomatic. And that's when I realized I need to change mindsets of people, I need to change perceptions of people. And in Germany, my teammate Arina Najwa, the lady, the hijabi from the Insla uh, International Islamic University of Malaysia, my very same university, in one of the rounds, we, we were privileged to meet up uh, with the debaters from Harvard University and Oxford University. And I distinctly remember their facial expression before my teammates spoke. Their facial expression was like, I was what, like, pretty sure we can wipe this scheme off very easily. Yeah. And it's not only me, I know a lot of my friends from UT Mara, UITM Sha'alam also faced that before. But that was the stereotype, the perception placed upon Muslims, upon people who wear hijabs. That was the ongoing perception. But after she spoke, thank God, we won the round. And right after the round, the debaters approached us. And the first thing she said to my teammate was, ah, I didn't know that you could speak very good English. I was like, offensive. But at the same time, obviously, I took it in the most positive way possible. And she took it in the most positive way possible. But then from there onward, we became good friends. And until today, we are actually in contact with them. But then they told us that our interaction this very small interaction was able to change their minds. Similarly, this year, when I became the first um, chief adjudicator to be appointed for the Cambridge Varsities, at the same time, both Malaysian teams, IIUM and UITM Sha'alam, won both the categories in one of the toughest debating competitions in the world. <laughs> These actions change mindsets of people. From there onward, we imprint the Malaysian flag in the hearts and minds of those who watch this debate. It shows that Malaysians cannot just be taken lightly, that we cannot be bullied. And that's a very small thing which can actually make the biggest of differences. Through my own life, again, it shaped my identity. It also shapes other people's perceptions of Muslims, of Malaysians, of Malays, or what have you. All those identities, which were previously stereotyped to be inferior, can be changed. But debating allowed me, or created that platform for me, to empathize for others. And from there onward, I realized that that platform cannot only be secluded in my own bubble, bubble of debaters where we argue and speak, and after the debate tournament, it ends. I realized that we must expand that bubble, that we need to ensure that the very people who helped us get where we are at today will be the people who we will assist again. And I was able to travel to more than 25 countries in that four-year time span because of all the experiences which I collected as a Malaysian. And I very proudly bring the Malaysian flag wherever I go. And that particular experience equipped me or to some extent mandated for me to also give back to as a community and society, not in terms of teaching, debating, and public speaking, but to also speak up for those who might be underprivileged. Because at that point in time, I was already equipped with the knowledge. At that point in time, I've already spoken about those issues quite heatedly in debate rounds all over the world, Therefore, 
I must also speak up for those who could not. Because the very first person who pulled me into debating was a person who extended that helping hand. I could share my history, some things I cannot mention, I could share my history next time, but I was a terrible, terrible person before this. And a lot of us, even me back then, I would never be able to assist myself in like, why do I, why, why do I not assist myself? I'm like, I'm, I won't go anywhere anyway. I distinctly remember one of my ustazas back then in my religious school in Johor said that I'll end up becoming a drug addict, I'll become a criminal. I'm not joking, like seriously. Um, I do look forward to meet her soon though. Uh, hopefully change her mind. But there was this sense of hopelessness imbued into me. But my senior was the person who still gave me that lending hand, helping hand, and still decided to build that bridge to pull me out of that cycle of oppression or cycle of ignorance. It just shows that anyone, anywhere, any one of you in this room can become that agent of change. Anyone. It doesn't mean that you have to be a debater. It doesn't mean that you need to have a degree or a master or a PhD. As long as you have that empathy. And it is that very empathy which was rooted in debating, which I got, which now allow me to do what I'm doing today. I actually do not have a timer. I literally do not. <laughs> One more minute. Amazing. This is like right timing. In a way, debating has allowed me to care for others. And I am here today because of that journey which I took. And I genuinely hope that even if I'm unable to persuade you to join debating, at least that at those experiences which I share, the journey which I took, which I shared with all of you, will hopefully empower you to speak up, to care, to empathize. Despite all the struggles which we face, despite the barriers which we face or the people who confront us and oppression which pervades, as long as we are together in this battle, I'm very sure that we will come out triumphant. I always like to use this phrase, and it's in Basin, allow me to use this. Di mana ada kemahuan, di situ pastinya ada jalan. I would never expect to be standing in front of you here today, five years ago, and yet here I am. And I will continue doing what I'm doing today, because if I don't, I'm betraying the senior who put me and gave me his helping hand. I'm, be I'm betraying those who actually assisted me in liberating me from the cycle of ignorance. And I believe that I, and I hope that all of you, will also assist those who might be in that cycle to help you, help us, help Malaysia. Thank you very much. <laughs>